Special teams coach Stu Holt told me on Thursday, we're going to let Tudin run kicks back and Jalen Lane potentially run punts. And away we go from Blacksburg. And it will be Bashaw Tudin. No, it's Malachi Thomas fighting to the near side, 25. And Thomas, who will be the backup to Bashaw Tudin, is brought down around the 27 yard line. It'll be a gain of 16. And that is where Virginia Tech will start. And here is Grant Wells making his 35th career start at Marshall and now here at Virginia Tech. Yeah, and he's a guy that kind of had a, a struggle of a season a year ago, but they feel good about him, his decision making, his leadership. And quite honestly, that is why he's the starting quarterback here for the Hokies. Only had three games with 200 or more yards of passing a year ago. In motion, that's Lane in the orbit. Wells gives ground and overshoots Tootin on what would have been a screen. Wells has got to be a little amped up here, Tim, right? Uh, I'm sure he's a little amped, amped up. The shame of missing that screen is it's going to be a big play. They've got guys out in front, and because of the motion, Old Dominion's defense reacted in a way that they had a big play coming out the back end. Monarchs go with three down linemen for defensive coordinator Blake Silen. Here is Tootin's first carry in a Virginia Tech jersey, and he fights to the 32. It'll be a gain of about six on the play. That'll bring up third down. That run right there, give you an example, that probably should have been stopped for about one or two yards. You see the vision of Bashel Tootin, something the coaches talk to us quite a bit about is his balance, his power, but also his vision. It's a pretty good pickup on second down. You see the tight end Gosnell in motion. Three wide receivers. Here to the boundary is Daquan Felton, a transfer from Norfolk State, who they're excited to see. Wells, quick throw and juggled and dropped by Lane. There was some traffic there. Taj Rael, junior safety from Charlotte, had a hand in there for the Monarchs. And it's just a play that Jalen Lane's got to make. It's man coverage, cover one across the board. He wins inside, bodies inside, put it on his chest. The reason it's on his back shoulders because of the interior pressure from E.J. Green. It's a good ball by Wells on third down. Isaiah Page is going to wait on the punt of Peter Moore. A year ago, Moore averaged 41.7. He was number six in the ACC. Page averaged seven and a half yards of return on punts. It was seventh best in the Sun Belt. Moore angling here to the boundary side. It will hit and take a hokey bounce. Inside the 20 and stop right outside the 15 yard line. So just a minute eight in, Peter Moore's punt is 51 yards. And here's the other Grant in our quarterback battery tonight. Grant Wells for Virginia Tech. And here is a junior transfer from Fordham out of Yorktown High School named Grant Wilson, who threw a grand total of 13 passes at Fordham. And this is a Tough environment to play in for any quarterback, much less somebody that only has 13 career attempts, and this is his first start. And almost 70,000 people at full throat. Wicks in the backfield, and we got an early move from Santana Saunders, the left tackle. Full start, number 71. Offers, five yard penalty, four four five. This place is rocking. And what gets them even louder is when you do that. Yep. Old Dominion cannot afford to let them be encouraged by the fact that they're impacting this football game. Snap to Wilson. Keyshawn Wicks. And he is spun around and dropped. And that is Norrell Pollard. And if there is a unit, Tim, on the defensive side for the Hokies that wants to get cranked up tonight, it feels like that front four might be ahead of the list. And Wilson trying to keep will get to about the 15, maybe. Antoine Powell Ryland is a transfer from Florida making the play. And you saw it on second down. I would expect them to be quick on third down as well to help negate some of this noise they're facing. Monarchs in a two by two look here on third down a year ago. They were 123rd nationally at 29 percent. 
Virginia Tech was fourth in the ACC on third down defensively at 34% a season ago. Wilson wants to throw in trouble and sacked. Keyshawn Burgos. Each club goes three and out. Well, Burgos gets there, and Kelly Lawson just ends up being a, a free runner because they don't pass it off up front. And when that happens, you know, it really felt force Grant Wilson to move. The shame of it is he's got receivers running free, just not able to hold up in protection. Yep, Grant Wilson, the old coaching line, last big crowd he saw was his junior prom. Wobbly kick from Dwayne the Aussie, and this is Lane the fair catch plus territory at the 48. Almost three minutes in, first period in Blacksburg, no score. A start, and then you have a, a miss in protection, and not how you want to get things going on the road in this stadium. 48 yard line plus territory for Virginia Tech, second possession. Tootin going to try and round the corner. Boy, pretty good tackle in space. That's Lamarion James, the junior from Norfolk. So we had 23 tackles a year ago. Very good tackle in space. Lamarian James, who's going to made his name as a returner, full-time starter at corner, and Tootin bounces this. He's a hard back to get down, does a nice job. Daquan right the tight end and the slot to the top of the screen. Wells, quick throw. This is Lane now. He'll have a first down, knocked out of bounds into the hokey bench at the 36. Got shoved out by Jones and Ryle. That's an area where I think Virginia Tech is better. Speed and ability with the ball in the hands of your wide receivers in space. Jalen Lane, they're encouraged about him. First completion for Wells, nine yards and a first down. Quick hand to Tootin, steps out of a tackle. And Bashaw Tootin, boy, great run pursuit that time. Sean Asbury, transfer from Boston College, who was still kind of getting his legs a year ago, Blake Seiler told us, but has had a really good August. Made the play there. Here comes Drones. So Wells is out, and Kyron Drones is in for second and 11 at the 37. Here's the Baylor transfer with Malachi Thomas, by the way, in the backfield. Play clock winding down to four. Drones gets it snapped. Quick throw. Thomas. Flag on the play as Thomas steps out of bounds. Right around the Old Dominion 29. Gary Patterson. First and foul. Welcome to Patterson. Number four. Defense. The three yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Amari Morrison, the defensive end. You see Morrison at the bottom of your screen, and that's just. Be honest with you, that looks like it's crown of the helmet. They might have an extra look at this. Morrison, who only played three ball games a year ago for Old Dominion, saddled the rest of the year with injuries. Wells has come back in the game, and there's the whistle, Tim, sure to the enough. point I think you were the making. Previous play is under further review for potential targeting. It's everybody's least favorite rule in college football. You know, my, myself included. One of the easiest ones to see is if the player makes contact with the crown of his helmet. Morrison is coming in unblocked. It's a swing screen to the back, and I mean, he lowers his head. Well, they're seeing it on the big board here in the end zone at Lane Stadium. We'll step aside. Gary Patterson and his group having a look see. There's Morrison. Did he hit with the crown of the helmet? Back after this. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Injury has been disqualified for targeting here on the second defensive possession. And this is Malachi Thomas with Grant Wells back in the game, picking up about five. Uh, I believe it's. It's just crown of the helmet and it, you know it quarterback in the pocket does get some protection but it's just it's lowering your head leading with the crown of the helmet and look that rule as much as everybody hates it is to protect the player who's lowering his head as much as it is 
to protect the player that's getting hit. Second down and six. Thomas just straight ahead. And we'll be close to another Virginia Tech first down. Lowry, big 280 pound sophomore in the defensive front to tackle. And here comes Kyron Jones. One of the things Brent Pratt talked to us about is look, we, you know, quarterbacks are not live to tackle during camp. Let's see if they can tackle Kyron Jones, who's listed at over 230 pounds. Expect to see him keep the ball on the ground. Baylor transfer takes the snap and he will run with it and he cracks the five and that'll be enough to make it first and goal. Rael was the first monarch to get to drones. And this is just having another ball carry in the backfield and actually a pretty good lead block on Jason Henderson and yep. that allows the big quarterback to lower his shoulder and pick up the first down. Thomas stays with 43 makes the stop for Old Dominion. And I'm just going to say it now at third and goal. The way this is going and where the football is, I'm running the ball twice here. Yep. I, I, I'm, I'm leaning on them with my offensive line. Tyler Bowen talked about setting an identity in terms of the run game, creating an identity. This is one of the ways you do it. Tenth play of the drive for the Hokies. Drones the keep and stood up at the one. He faked the handoff to Tootin, and Rael has been very active from the secondary for ODU here early. And here comes Wells with Jalen Lane. St. Germain the tight end, and drones come out. So, Tim, to your point, four down territory for the Hokies. I just think so, especially with the way Old Dominion's offensive series went when they got the football, where this is, what it would be like for Grant Wilson to come in backed up. I like the call by Brent Pryor. Wells with Tootin off his right hip. Tight end to the right, receivers left. Wells wants to throw and throws beyond the reach of Bashaw Tootin. And the Hokies cash it out on downs. Jaleel Taylor, who transferred from Carolina, Wayne Matthews, got in the throwing lane of Grant Wells. Yeah, and I think Grant Wells misses one here, tries to work to his left. And it's a missed opportunity for Virginia Tech because. They were really rolling. Old Dominion backed up to its two. Hokies knocked on the door. Monarchs wouldn't let them in. Still scoreless in Blacksburg. Go Saban, this goat done took over our office. And he's using it to send out medical bills. Good hands. Hospital bill for Prime. Yeah. Did you just say gap? He's talking about expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Good thing Coach Prime knows about. Say it one time. Affleck. Because Affleck gets you money to help close that gap. Now how do we get this goat out of here? Affleck. Meet one of my new homies. <laughs> get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Well, after Ricky Ronnie's defense stopped Virginia Tech on four downs inside the five. Here is Wilson and his second possession. And a procedure call, I believe, on Old Dominion. Ball start. Number 65. Offense. Half the distance to the goal. Hey. First down. You tried to tell us this week, right? You played all over the world, Tim Hasselbeck. But this is the loudest place, huh? Loudest place I've ever played in. And when you encourage them, <laughs> the fans, that is, they just make it worse. Grant Wilson. The clap cadence from the Monarchs. Fake to Sonny. Cross the middle and underthrows Javon Harvey. Let's return to Virginia Tech's fourth down play a moment ago. I think it's a missed opportunity. They're running a stick nod concept with an underneath. And I think Grant Wells just comes off of this too soon because Jalen Lane is wide open. You look at him right here, just sticking with the football. Instead, look at his eyes. He's already coming back this way. On the reset, just to deliver a good ball, and you have a touchdown. Second down. Xavier Black making his 13th career start at center for Old Dominion, trying to get everybody set against this hokey front seven. Wilson flushed to his right, going to shovel ahead. Obisani flipped over, 
about the seven yard line. Tackle made by Keontae Jenkins. Such a good job of escaping by Wilson and a really nice job of Chris Adams, the right tackle. Excuse me, it's, it's the right guard, Leroy Thomas, not getting called for a hold in the end zone. A lot of times a quarterback escapes back there, you end up grabbing. Being in the end zone, that would have been a disaster for the Monarchs. Thomas is the most veteran piece of Old Dominion's offensive line, making his 25th career start tonight. Another third down op here for the Monarchs, who missed on their opening possession when they went three and out. Running that risk here. Wilson to keep straight up the gut first down. He will hit the slide button around the 22 yard line. Listen, it's a great read. You know, quarterbacks can make great reads in the run game as well. That was a great read in the run game by Grant Wilson. Good formation to create space for him. And that's a huge first down for yep. Old Dominion. 16 yard run for Wilson. Monarchs out to their 22. Sonny, again the fake. Wilson squeezes for about five or six. Let's look at the first of the two runs we've seen from the quarterback. So you just look at these wide splits. That's really to get these defenders to come out this way. And then you read the backside end, excuse me, the reading the inside tackle. And when you do that, you just have so much space. They talk about grass. We want the ball to go where there's open grass. Well, it's happened twice in the quarterback run game. Here's Wilson the throw, Granger the catch, and boy, look at the maroon shirts come flying. My goodness. Mario Kendricks, first guy there to get a Marion Granger. Minus four on the play. It is a great sign for your defense. When you've got 300 pounders sprinting out to the perimeter to defend wide receiver screens. Wilson going to lob it downfield. It was intended, I think, for Isaiah Page, but he had been steered out of bounds by Jalen Stroman into the Virginia Tech bench. So it was Page, number five for Old Dominion, who was, I think, the primary receiver in the pattern. And on fourth down, They'll ask the Aussie Ethan Dwayne to punt. And Chris Marv has had some adjustments he's had to go through here, Tim, especially in the back. But I think in terms of the pace and his players kind of seeing the pace of a defense, and a lot of college football teams go fast now, but I think getting used to that in the game. And the ball is snapped over the head of Dwayne. It will be a safety. The freshman snapper, Brock Walters from Hawaii. First game. And he gives the Hokies two points. Just a high snap. Just misses him. And if we talk about quarterbacks playing in this environment, look, you got to put your head between your legs and throw it backwards 15 yards. <laughs> You can miss doing that as well, and fortunately for Brock Walters, it's exactly what happened. So Walters, who played his high school ball in Florida in the Orlando area, a native of Hawaii, sends it past the Aussie punter, Dwayne, and now a free kick from Old Dominion to Virginia Tech will be coming up. Ricky Ronnie talked to us about turnover margin, unforced errors, taking care of ourselves, penalties, all the things you would suspect for game one, but at the same time, too, staying with the game, not letting the game get ahead of us. May have happened a couple times here in about the first eight minutes or so of play, but here's the free kick. Ball will bounce, and this is laying off the 27. Quickly, 40. And out to the 45 of Virginia Tech goes Jalen Lane. Tackle made by Whitner of the Monarchs. Well, we're kind of in the middle of five straight days of ACC football. Never too early to tell you about next Thursday night, though. Murray State, how about the win last night for Jeff Brom in Louisville?
730 presented by Dr. Pepper and then Vanderbilt travels to Winston-Salem. Congratulations to Dave Clawson. Career win 150 the other night against Elon. Charleston Southern Clemson. Florida State Southern Miss. Tim and I will be in Chapel Hill to see Carolina Appalachian. Here's Wells rolling right throwing for Daquan Wright the tight end ruled out of bounds. Second down will be coming up. Devin Epps was in pursuit of Grant Wells the Hokie quarterback. I think it's important for Wells to put together a good series. It's hard as a quarterback when you come out of the game even if you know it's going to happen. But I think it's important for him to get some confidence and get something going. Just one of his first five for nine yards. Here's Wells now he's going to keep it. Hokies turning the table on Old Dominion and Wells will be close to a first down near the Monarch 45 Asbury again the safety to stop. Wells isn't a great runner but he's a good enough runner and he's a willing runner and he rushed for a touchdown last year in this matchup and when it's well blocked can be a decent little threat. Virginia Tech had Aiden Green in the ball game, a true freshman from Knoxville a moment ago. He's come out. They go back to the too tight look here to the bottom of your screen. And straight ahead. Not much there for Tootin. So Bashal Tootin from Paulsboro, New Jersey, a year ago, third team FCS All America at North Carolina AT. 1,363 yards, 10 straight 100 yard games. And he's trying to revitalize the Hokie run game here tonight with Malachi Thomas. First and 10 after the run there. Quick throw here on the near side. Daywan Lofton makes the catch. A year ago, Daywan Lofton, like a lot of those Hokies, Receivers Tim banged up through some of the season. He comes into tonight with that's his 30th career catch. And I think it's a good example of someone who was banged up. You bring competition to the wide receiver room, and now all of a sudden, you know, guys aren't taking for granted their ability to get on the field. Hmm. Create that competition, and we've seen the ball get spread around a little bit so far tonight. The targeting. Okay. So Gary Patterson. We'll head over here to the review monitor. And this is a booth initiated review. Oh, wow, this is Jason Henderson, the All America linebacker and the nation's leading tackler a year ago at 186 stops. Yeah, I mean, listen, we don't have a defenseless player. We have a ball carrier. Right. So let, let's start there. But we're in the neighborhood of the crown of the helmet again. Henderson, who already's got two tackles a year ago, his numbers were incredible. Eight games of 15 or more, including 22 in a game against Georgia Southern. So Gary Patterson continues to look on. Don't forget Al Riveron is the new supervisor of officials in the Atlantic Coast Conference and part of the conference is moved to Charlotte featuring a brand new command center where these reviews are conducted from now in addition to the work of the on field officials. The communicator tonight Richard Page the replay official is Mike Webster. After further review, there is no targeting on the play. Second down. So Henderson will stay in the game. And that is a huge, huge break yep. for Old Dominion. We had the graphic up there in terms of his production. Look, look when you're mentioned with Luke Keekley, look at 190 tackles. You got 186. That means you are around the ball always. Yep. So second down. With a couple minutes to go in the opening period. This is Tootin. Baseball Tootin just keeps the legs driving, doesn't he? Wayne Matthews 
the tackle. For Old Dominion, third and about four here, Tim. Wes, I, I, you're exactly right. Tootin just keeps the legs moving. I think his power, they, they hope that it will wear people down. Hmm. Looks like Old Dominion is coming with all out pressure. Zero blitz, man across the board with no help. I'd expect Virginia Tech to put it up. There goes Tootin trying to bounce it to the outside. Got to beat a man to the edge and cannot. Couldn't shake away from Taj Rael, who has had a terrific opening period for Ricky Ronnie's defense from his safety spot. Yeah, I was surprised they ran the football. They got a good look pre snap of what Old Dominion was doing. Look to the sideline to change the play. It's hard to run versus zero blitz. Maybe a decision was made. We're running on third down because we're going to go for it on fourth down once again. There's Blake Seiler, the defensive coordinator for the Monarchs. Part of Bill Snyder's Kansas State teams as a defensive lineman in his playing days. Malachi Thomas has come in now. Fourth down in two plus territory at Old Dominion's 37. Wells shoots it inside. Lofton the catch. First down Virginia Tech to the 22. It'll be a 15 yard throw. Slightly behind Lofton but nonetheless the fourth down converted. Oh, really behind. There was a throw earlier that was very similar that I thought Jalen Lane should have made. But that is a great catch on an inside slant ball high and behind. That's a hard catch and then even a little run after the catch. Here is Malachi Thomas trying to find a spot. Henderson rolls him over. Just inside the 20 yard line and that might likely will be the final play of the first period. And that's why the receiver room being better matters right there. Like that is that was an incompletion a year ago. And that's why. I think the evaluation of Grant Wells as a player. Still felt incomplete. Wells going to try and pull the snap. Does final play of the period. Wells to his right and juggled and dropped by the tight end. Big sophomore Daquan Perry or Daquan Wright from Perry, Georgia. Couldn't hang on to it. Hokies two, Monarchs nothing. End of one in Blacksburg. They got to pull him by the shirt tail and say, "Hey, man, we don't have the pressure there." All right, coach. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Third down for Wells. Out of the quarter break. Direct for Lane. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. We heard a lot about Jalen Lane. And you see his speed, and it was his speed on the deep cross. They got Grant Wells' attention. Brett Pry talking to his quarterbacks, fired up about it. And it's a beautiful throw right to the face mask of Jalen Lane. 20 yard score, 8 0. John Love's point after. 9 0 after the first snap of quarter two here in Blacksburg. You run a tight end on a shallow cross to try to influence the underneath coverage and it's Jalen Lane on the inside crosser across the safety's face and then keeping the speed up which he does and then a beautiful throw by Grant Wells as I said right to his face mask. Ten plays 55 yards a little better than four minutes off this first half clock. I think that's important I said at the start of the drive for Grant Wells like I know he knows that Colin Jones is going to be part of the package and, and, and he understands that role. At the same time, it's hard for a quarterback to be in and out of the lineup and you need to have some success to not feel like you're permanently going to be on the side watching. That throw right there will do a lot for his confidence. Tim, you've been the starter, you've been the backup, you've been a part of the combination of quarterbacks. For sure. It's a mental fight as much as it is what you're doing literally physically, right? Yeah, and it's hard enough to play the position. It's even harder when you're playing that other game in your head of, wait a second, I started one for five, and this other kid is having success. Is my footing still good? Yeah. Kyle Lowe will kick it away. Granger and Lamarian James are deep. And this will be Granger off the five. Across the 15, and boy, flipped over around the 17. Let's rejoin Tyler Tannenbaum. 
Yeah, guys, football is in Jalen Lane's blood. His dad, Brian, was his high school head football coach. He said he was harder on me than anybody else. If someone else dropped a pass, he's like, yeah, you can go back and get him next time. Me, I'm sitting on the bench, but he said it was an absolute blessing. The one message his dad has told him his whole life, never let anybody put a lid on you. If you're a bottle, don't let anyone put a cap on you. The sky is not the limit. So the Middle Tennessee State transfer already up to big things here in Blacksburg. Just saw dad in the crowd and he has a big smile on his face. He's doing his dad proud guys. 31st career game for Lane. It's his 11th touchdown catch if you count his time with Rick Stockstill's Blue Raiders. And that is Keyshawn Wicks firing through on the first snap of the possession for Wilson. And trying to get guys back off the far side who had been battling across the way it was Dorian Strong and Javon Harvey ended up over there near the Hokey cheerleaders. Wilson tried to shoot it to Jordan Block. Incomplete just beyond the reach. I thought Delane does a nice job. It's an RPO. They pulled the ball out of the belly of the back and trying to hit Bly on a little slam. Delane is able to kind of undercut it. Only the 13th snap for Kevin Decker's offense here of this first half. Third and four. Monarchs are one for three. Jaden Keller, the middle linebacker for Virginia Tech, trying to get his unit set. Play clock down to one. Wilson a fake. Now going to dump it out to Wicks on the backside. First guy missed. Wicks leans for the stick and will have the first down at the 28-yard line. Cole Nelson, the defensive end, got just enough of Keyshawn Wicks there. That's a heck of a play by Wicks and a good job by Grant Wilson. That's actually a lateral. It's going backwards. Mm. So it is a run play for Wicks, but a first down nonetheless at the 28 for Old Dominion. Wilson straight ahead. Here's Wicks. First guy missed again, and he's dumped at the 35. Be a run of seven on first down for Keyshawn Wicks. A year ago, 125 yards on 32 carries. He had five for 14. Remember, it was Blake Watson who had the game winner for the Monarchs and did the bulk of the runs in terms of the victory a year ago in Norfolk for these Monarchs. Old Dominion going with these stacks real wide. You see University of Tennessee do it. This is to, to basically get the front to declare to try to create room in the run game. Wicks one more time and Hokie's got a pretty good handle on him. Antoine Powell Ryland was the first guy for Virginia Tech. Well this Old Dominion offense is being coordinated by Kevin Decker. There he is. Spent the previous four years at Fordham, and if you looked at the Rams numbers a year ago at FCS, they are, it doesn't even look like they play 100-yard field, like they're playing indoors. <laughs> Video game numbers. I really enjoyed getting the chance to talk to him. He's creative. He has a lot of confidence in his group. You know, obviously year one, but. Here's Wicks again, and Keyshawn Wicks will be measured to the 39. And that will be enough for another Old Dominion first down. Ricky Ronnie, in talking about Kevin Decker, as you see the Monarchs hustle back to the formation here, he said, I didn't have any real connection to him, but guys play hard for him, and he had answers. And he had a good reputation. And the fact that he's a 35-year-old and already on his second coordinator job, I think tells you something about how people in the profession feel about him. Yeah. He's got a lot of Chip Kelly, Ryan Day influence, and some Josh Heupel. Mixed in two. First and ten for Old Dominion. Uh oh, Wilson bails from the pocket here to the right and throws to Page, and it is a catch and a first down for Old Dominion at the Virginia Tech 49. 12 yard throw to junior Isaiah Page from Richmond. He's a great job of Keyshawn Wicks in the backfield helping out in pass protection. That allowed Wilson to get outside the pocket and make a play. Wick stays in the backfield with Wilson now, who Tim is starting to settle in. Or it's Roach now. Devin Roach is coming to the ball game at the running back spot. Number 23. There's a look. 
Roach who switches to the right hip of Wilson. And here goes Roach. Inside the 40. Now inside Virginia Tech's 30 yard line for Devin Roach. And that's a pretty good move. First carry in the open field by Roach. Another read play. You get in the open field and Jalen Jones. And a ball thrown by Wilson hit as he cut it loose by Kelly Lawson incomplete. It is Roche, I beg your pardon, not Roach, the ball carrier a moment ago, who's from Dunbar High School, true freshman from the Baltimore area, having an impact in this ball game tonight. Wicks has returned to the lineup for Old Dominion. Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass a moment ago. Best drive of the night for Old Dominion, Tim. Tenth play here. Wicks again and thrown to the ground that time by Powell Ryland. I feel like the Old Dominion offensive line is settling in a little bit. They basically run right into the teeth of the pressure on that last play, but it's a good pickup to give them for a manageable third down. That's Bly in motion to the far side. Monarchs of two or two on third down in this drive. Three of five now in the ball game. Wicks again bounces left side. First down and he'll get to the 16 before he got thrown back by Mose Phillips the third. And Jalen Stroman. Yeah, and we talk about, you know, Kevin Decker and this offense and all the numbers they put up throwing the football, but he said, we need to run it. This doesn't work if we're not running the football. First down, quick snap, throwing. That's Dutton the catch, and he scores. Dominic Dutton, a transfer from South Carolina where he ran track, is in the end zone for Old Dominion. That's a really good play by Grant Wilson because I think he's trying to work outside, but Dutton flashes, and I think surprised him. He just needed to get the ball and stick it, stick it on him as quickly as he could, and he's able to do that. And how about settling in for Grant Wilson? Just 13 career pass attempts at Fordham, to come in here and put in a put together a good drive. Ethan Sanchez tries to add the point and does for Old Dominion. 12 plays, Tim, 83 yards, 520, and Grant Wilson reminding us upstairs the stage is not too big at Lane Stadium tonight. During the football and getting into the end zone. So Sanchez going to kick it away here, and Malachi Thomas, Bashal Tootin, wait for Virginia Tech. Old Dominion who... Kind of fought themselves in the first two possessions. Roughed up by the Hokies. Now on the board with a touchdown. And here's Tootin off the four. Bashaw the 20. Bangs into his own guy. Reroutes to the 27. Maybe the 28-yard line. And that's where Virginia Tech's fourth possession will start. Don't forget after the ball game. We got everybody here tonight at Lane Stadium and Worsham Field. The huddle post game tonight. Kelsey Riggs in charge of this fray. With Eric McLean, Eddie Royal, E.J. Manuel, and of course... National Football Foundation and College Football Hall of Famer Mark Richt. Following our broadcast of the fifth meeting ever between the Hokies and the Monarchs, here's Wells going to work. Virginia Tech from its 27 and a flare to Tootin on the near side. Or Lane, beg your pardon, 83, not 33. And he will reach the 33-yard line. It'll be a gain of six on the play. I think Tyler Bowen, offensive coordinator for Virginia Tech, has done a nice job with plays like that. It's really a flat screen. They're blocking on the perimeter, but they're throwing it at the line of scrimmage so you can block downfield and you're getting the ball into one of your playmakers hands. Two receivers to either side. Tootin is with Wells here. Inside nine to go in this first half. And straight ahead goes Tootin. Be a yard shy of the first down at the 36. Sean Asbury 
making the play. This Old Dominion defense a year ago allowed almost 443 yards, almost 200 on the ground. But so far, it looks like Blake Siler's got guys at least in the right neighborhood, Tim, to make plays tonight. Right neighborhood. They're playing hard. They're playing fast. And you got two good linebackers that fly to the football. You just want to hang in there and find a way to come up with a turnover. Yeah, we've told you about Henderson. They're very excited and enthusiastic about the progress that EJ Green has made at the other linebacking spot. And here's Tootin. He had the first down to the 38 before Asbury led the white shirts of ODU and threw him back. And Henderson is slow to his feet after being involved in the play for the Monarchs. Brought an inside pressure there, and Green, who kind of made his 24 there, who made his name as a special teamer, he plays hard. When they send him on a blitz, it's like he's running on a kickoff. Malachi Thomas has returned to the backfield. Well set. Going to sail it deep. This is Felton, and just beyond his reach incomplete. Nolan Johnson, the transfer from Miami of Ohio, was the defender with Daquan Felton. And with Felton at six foot five, you don't want to overthrow guys like that. Guys that are six foot five, let them get their hands on it. This is a missed opportunity where it's you know nearly thrown out of bounds. And you know Felton, when you're six five, trust the guy that you can underthrow him. Trust him that you can let him come back for the football. Wells has hit only five of eleven tonight in this first half. Here's Thomas on a little toss from the gun, and that's about a four, maybe five yard pickup. Let's call it third down and five here. Trinidad the stop for the Monarchs. A year ago, Old Dominion was bringing all kinds of pressure on known passing situations. Not sure that that'll be the case. Still with Grant Wells another year in this system. Snap low on third down. Wells collects. Shoots it middle of the field beyond the reach of Ollie Jennings. Incomplete. That's a really good pass pro. Everything's picked up perfectly. I think Grant Wells just rushes it. You know, no need to kind of play fast. The snap doesn't help him. It's down around his ankles. He's just given that one more beat to see the angle that Jennings is going to come out of it with. And a little too much steam on that one. Seventh play of the drive is going to be the second punt of the night. Peter Moore offers it. And the fair catch from Page. Signal four, and it will get into the end zone before Virginia Tech can down it. So Old Dominion will start trailing two with six and a half. New, but find peace in yourself. You're not playing the 65,000 fans here. You're playing 11 and 11 football out there. So he said just rely on your guys, rely on everything that you've learned. And he also told me he's an Arlington, Virginia native. He has 30 to 40 friends and family in the stands watching him try to pull off this upset, guys. Well, he's leaning on his run game, too. And Obi Sani has a first down for the Monarchs. Out to the 35-yard line goes Sani. Redshirt sophomore from the home state of Ricky Ronnie, Aurora, Colorado. He only had three carries for five yards last year against the Hokies. Here's Wilson now going to gun it downfield and overshoots. Sophomore Kelby Williams. Transfer from Trinity Valley Community College in Texas. One of a handful of receivers we've seen already from Kevin Decker and his offense in this first half. And they feel good about their receiver room. I think they feel like they have speed. Guys that can run, maybe even attack down the field. And so I would not be surprised to see some more shots throughout this game. Second in the full 10 after the incomplete pass. Old Dominions just under 100 yards of offense. Virginia Tech just over 100 yards of offense with under six to go in the first frame. And Sonny got knocked down. Whoa. My goodness. Kelly Lawson. We know he's a freak, Tim. Listen, it's Kelly Lawson, and it's started by Alan Tisdale. He's kind of a truck who basically meets in the backfield, which frees up Kelly Lawson. And second nice play by Lawson tonight. Loss of two, and Wilson going to hang it up. 
on third and long and incomplete. Dominic Dutton was the guy on the fly route. And the Monarchs will have to punt. Mansoor Delane was kind of the closest hokey. Kevin Decker not happy with the way that possession ended. Five plays and a punt. And here's Dwayne. Let's keep an eye on this freshman long snapper Walters. Gets it back safely. Punts a low liner for Lane. Jalen's got a touchdown receiving. And he'll be tackled at Virginia Tech's 38. 35 yard punt. Two point lead for the Hokies when we continue from Blacksburg. This game is a Virginia Tech Hokie, but. Grant Wells also ran the ball to set up the scoring pass. And it was a great catch on third down by Lofton, and then excellent throw to Lane, who used his speed to get in the end zone and said it earlier, but I really think that was an important drive for Grant Wells, who definitely had an up and down performance so far. Throw the safety on the board in the first period, and that's how Virginia Tech's got nine. Here is Bashaw Tootin and well, trying to come to the near side and Sean Asbury first guy there Henderson was in the neighborhood Wayne Matthews also there this Blake Siler defense is run pretty well east to west here in the opening half of play so they're doing it without Amari Morrison who yeah. they lost because of a targeting early in the game second and nine just inside the Virginia Tech 40 Tootin and able to step away from Asbury and plow forward to the 44. You know what Tootin's done a nice job of is when he's bounced that and then you see the second door, secondary support come in, he then gets skinny. You know, for a big back who bounces it, he's then able to, to get skinny again to get north and south. And I feel like a couple times it should have been one, two yard gain, ends up being four or five yard gain. Daquan Wright, the tight end in motion. Here's Wells pushing the pocket right. Shoots it, and it's caught. Catch made. Stephen Gosnell a year ago, 10 catches. 13th catch of his 25 career games. Four minutes to go, and Bashal Tootin staying in the lineup, Taylor. Yeah, guys, it's a name we may not know now, but you're going to get to know him here in the ACC. Coach Brent Bry said he came out of the womb to be a running back just based on his build. He's huge. And if you ask him what kind of runner he is, he says he's an angry runner. He's got that dog in him. And it really does explain his nickname, Tugboat Tootin. He got the name at North Carolina A&T when he wouldn't let a defender fall off of him for 10 yards. So he'll pull anyone up and down this field with that big body, guys. Oh. 10 carries 24 yards in his hokey debut tonight. And now second in the full 10. Remember ODU gets the ball to start second half. After deferring the toss. Wells slips it and my goodness. Daquan Wright dropped it. That's Wright's second drop. Basically what Virginia Tech is doing there is they're running today's version of the triple option it basically dive keep pitch and the pitch man is the tight end running into the flat that's the second time they've tried to get right the ball in the flat on a play similar to that and it's because of his ability he's a good athlete ball in space he's not able to secure the football grim reminder of some struggles a year ago too tim right for sure yeah third and the full 10. Old Dominion bringing the house. Wells low is going to lob for Lane down the field. What a catch! Inside the 15 and a first down for Virginia Tech. Monarchs raining down around Grant Wells. He lobs it over the top of Taj Rael for Jalen Lane. 34 yards. And because it's an inside fade, you've got all kinds of room to work. Much better job there, Grant Wells. Letting his receiver get the hand, his hands on the football. Lane with Felton to the left. Now he'll push through the formation. And Bashal Tootin breaks the 10 to the 9. But let's go back to the 34-yard connection. And you're going to see in the slot, and there was a little pressure into the face, some static of Grant Wells. But you see how that fade is being run from around the numbers on the field? That allows you room 
for the receiver to fade to it, which Lane does. Also gives more room for the quarterback to place the football. A couple of minutes left to go. Each school's got all three timeouts as we wind down this first half. Thomas is coming to game to join Wells, and now Virginia Tech's going to take a timeout. One of the three for Pry. And Ricky Ronnie, I don't think, is happy that the timeout was being awarded. And he's going to check with other crew members and referee Gary Patterson. So while Ricky litigates, quick reminder to you that week two of ACC football gets cranked up Thursday night. Cardinals will welcome the Racers of Murray State to Derby City, presented by Dr. Pepper. And then how about a quadruple header for you? Four scoops of ACC football. Start at 11 a.m., a little brunch with Dave Clawson and Clark Lee. Commodores will come rolling in from Nashville to see Wake. And a full slate of action. That starts at 11 a.m. And then the nightcap, George Sedano, Orlando Franklin, Marilyn Payne will be with you in Tallahassee for the Knowles and Southern Miss. Florida State plays tomorrow night, Mr. Hasselbeck. A little rematch from last year as yeah. well. Yeah, they've been talking about that one for a while, haven't Just they? Just a little bit <laughs> oh they've been talking about. It. Yep. Hokies 0 for 1 tonight in the red zone. Last year, 112th nationally. They had 18 touchdowns, 28 possessions. Wells loads for the end zone. Ollie Jennings, touchdown. Corner route by zero, Ali Jennings. He's got leverage, and that ball is just perfectly thrown by Grant Wells. And we talked a little bit about the receiver room being better for Virginia Tech. Guys being able to separate and get open, and Ali Jennings able to do that for the score. He had a big touchdown in the Monarchs win a year ago against Virginia Tech. And he's got a touchdown in his first game as a Hokie tonight against his old club. Pushes Virginia Tech to a nine point advantage with just a couple minutes to go in this first half. Full house has been active. And Tim, even though it's been a little bulky here in the first half, this crowd has not let up here tonight at Lane Stadium. They haven't let up, and I think that it's helped that the offense for Virginia Tech has been able to find some success, obviously, with two Grant Wells touchdown passes. No return for the Monarchs. Old Dominion will start from its 25, and what's come up at halftime, Kelsey Riggs? Well, J. Manuel and Eddie Royal after the half, you guys. All right, Kelsey, thank you. Off the 25, Keyshawn Wicks joins Grant Wilson, making his Old Dominion debut tonight. Wilson from the pocket, and he'll be sacked. Antoine Powell Ryland. I think took Saunders to tackle with him, Tim. To the right to him. It was basically just a power rush. Speed to just power to get to Grant Wilson. Loss of five, and now we got movement. Chris Adams says Virginia Tech is guilty here. Gary Patterson will let us know. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty. Still second down. Norrell Pollard potentially here. Let's go back to the side. Yeah, Powell Ryland, he's over here, and it's just a bull run. Just look at the speed and power playing with leverage. I'm not sure that he's ever even able to reach him. I think he actually basically gets the sack using Santana Saunders. First penalty of the night against Virginia Tech. Comes with 99 seconds to go. And here's Wicks trying to get some of the damage back. And he'll pick up a couple of yards. And now a timeout taken at the Virginia Tech bench, knowing third down's coming. Yeah, and we talked to Ricky Ronnie about, you know, the coin toss, and he basically talking about the middle eight. And so, you know, the last four, you know, the first half, the first four of the second half. 
there are a lot of coaches that subscribe to the importance of that segment of the football game and obviously right now with a minute 33 left in the half I think Ricky Ronnie would be happy if this thing ended up you know the half ended with the ball in their possession obviously Brent Price saying all right how can I force these guys to punt how can I force this quarterback on the road to put the ball in the air once again on third and long so there's a discussion. Gary Patterson has something for us. The previous play is under further review for potential targeting. So a booth initiated review. And this is a play involving Virginia Tech's Jalen Stroman, I believe. Right there against Keyshawn Wicks. The ball carrier, so we don't have a situation with a defenseless player. That that's not yep. that's not in the discussion. The discussion here is strictly crown of the helmet. And I mean, I'm just going to be real on the targeting thing. It's hard. You're tackling yep. really, you know, talented runners, and we're trying to protect the tacklers and the runners, all of it. Right. Tim, it, it feels like this is more toward the top of the helmet than some of the other ones. Yeah, I mean, look, it's I, hard to compare like listen, the Henderson play they, with the Morrison play and now this one, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the Henderson play. I mean, I believe that the crown of his helmet was involved right. on the Henderson play. He's yeah. still in the game, and I'm, and I think it's good that he's in the game. Right. Uh, it's not a. You know, we we kind of have a, a, a frame of reference of what the crown of the helmet is. It's basically the circumference around the top of the helmet and after okay. further review ruling on the field is personal foul number 26 with targeting number 26 is disqualified for the remainder of the game 15 yard penalty from the end the run automatic first down. So Jalen Stroman one of the starters from Bristol is disqualified for targeting here. I, I would just say this. I, I feel like I have seen watching college football for the last two weekends now more of these on ball carriers now yeah. where we're talking about the crown of the helmet on somebody coming in and cleaning up a tackle or making a tackle on a ball carrier than I really remember seeing a year ago. And listen, we're trying to make the game safer. It's frustrating when a player is disqualified. It's the world we're living in now. First and ten after the targeting call and the disqualification and that ball hit the ground incomplete for Granger. So Stroman now is replaced at least for the time being by Derek Canteen. This is a transfer from Georgia Southern who's from just outside of Augusta at Evans Georgia and a guy who got a lot of conversation going in our production and pre prep. Wilson just four of eleven here in the first half but does have the touchdown to Dutton. Virginia Tech has one timeout left. Quick throw on the perimeter. This is Amarian Granger, and he'll be helped out of bounds by Mansoor Delane. And it looks like his Delane on his Delane sat down for a moment. I think he's trying to get out of the ball game here. And he has to come out of the ball game, and Ricky Ronnie is not thrilled with how this is going. Obviously. An injury to stop the clock and Ricky Ronnie I think is going to gonna lose his cool on this yeah. number six Virginia Tech injured so now they have Josh Fuga the defensive tackle is down Monsoor Delane went down in front of the old Dominion bench then got up and tried to run off the field Chris Marv was telling him to get down now Fuga is up and now Ricky Ronnie's not happy at all with any of the proceedings here. It's a good little limp. Chris Marsh trying to get Delane to take a seat. Uh, <laughs> supposed to do that, Wes? What do you think? <laughs> yeah. 
Blitz. Now with 124 to go. Mario Kendricks has come in. Wilson in the gun. Third down. Hokies still have a timeout left. They've got a nine point lead. Crowd roaring at Wilson. He'll move to his right. Cut the field in half and delivered a bullet. And it's caught by Granger for a first down at the Virginia Tech 41. It's the second time we've seen Wilson do an excellent job when he's escaped to his right. Escaping to his right, throwing on the run. Two really accurate balls we've seen from him. Here's Wilson again, going to hand to Wicks. And Keyshawn Wicks will get four, maybe five on the play. And we got tackling off the ball downfield with Dorian Strong. And now all of a sudden we're getting a timeout taken by Old Dominion here. Yeah. Okay, there have been a few times now Dorian Strong mm. really mixing it up with the receiver that he ends up open. You mentioned earlier we had Strong in the and the receiver is Javon Harvey hanging yep. out with the, the cheerleaders. They were so far out of the play and just look at the top of the screen here. I mean, this is what it's looked like a number of times. It's a run play. Just staying on it and that's a body slam and yeah. it's one of those things where you could see an official say I've seen enough. Here's a 15 yarder just to let you know like I'm going to get this under control. And quite honestly, I find most officials, when you're outside the numbers and the play is in between the hashes and there's a body slam out there, yeah. that's a flag. Yep. So we'll keep an eye on Harvey and Dorian Strong on the undercard of our first half. Meanwhile, two timeouts left for Ronnie's Marta, our Monarchs here, Tim, and maybe a chance to put something on the board in the final minute. And these stacks with two over two, meaning two receivers with just two Bs, two DBs, would expect it to go that way. And it will. Downfield for Harvey. Just beyond his reach with strong trailing. Why'd you see that one, Tim? So here's, here's what happens. This is a little bit of what you see Tennessee do. You get these wide stacks. And if you just have two over two, it's telling you, I have a one-on-one. -on -one. And, and if these guys have choice routes and the guy plays off, you can hook it up. It's one of the reasons why you see more and more teams say, look, we're going to spread you out. If you play two over two, we don't have numbers in the run game. We're going to attack it outside. ODU five of eight on third down. Wilson hands to Wicks. First down, 20, 15, and flipped over at the 10. Clock will stop with 42 seconds left. First and goal, Nasir Peoples. The tackle of Keyshawn Wicks and ODU ready to go. Wilson will hand back to Wicks. He'll fight to the right side and a shoot top tackle handled by Keller, the linebacker, right around the five and a half. Yeah, and with two timeouts, 30 seconds left, you don't need to be going crazy in terms of not getting into a play that you want to get into. Plenty of time. Wilson going to keep it and now he's swung use around and pushed to the ground. And that's Jaden Keller, the linebacker. And there is the second timeout taken by Ricky Ronnie's team. Well, if you're Old Dominion, you're going to have a crack of at least three, maybe a touchdown. Yeah. And, and I think if you're Ricky Ronnie, look, this would be my thought process here. Everything's on the board. You don't have to throw the ball into the end zone because you have that timeout. So there's 16 seconds left. You have a timeout. It's third down. So time's really not the problem. And you don't have to throw it into the end zone because you can call a timeout. I'm saying that saying fourth down, I'm kicking the field goal. I'm going in at halftime knowing I'm getting the ball to start the second half down one score. So my thought process if I'm Ricky Ronnie is I've got three in the back. Kevin Decker, Grant Wilson, 
Wilson was a backup quarterback at Fordham. Decker was the offensive coordinator. They kind of got a, a vibe about him here. And what listen, do you like? What do you want to see from the quarterback? Well, well, here's the deal. A sack doesn't even matter because where you are in the field. What you need to do is not make a bad decision in terms of a turnover, and you don't have to force it into the end zone. Throwing it short of the goal line is fine. And Brett Pry now wants a timeout. He's going to use his last timeout. And he ran down inside the 10 yard line here at the near side to call it. Yeah, and I'll be clear, you get into those stack releases way outside. Okay, you get into those stack releases way outside. Like the run game is still on the table. It's the play that we saw just a few plays ago from Keyshawn Wicks. It's okay to run the football here. You don't get it, go ahead and take that last time out. Boy, Kip Johnson, the field judge, is getting the what for from Ricky Ronnie. And there's a look at Ethan Sanchez, the sophomore place kicker from Dallas, Georgia. There have been a few times where Ricky Ronnie has been upset, I think, with how a timeout has been awarded. I think so. And, yep. you know, Brent Pry is down around the, the 10 yard line taking the timeout. I think there's an element of Ricky Ronnie who's saying, like, hey, he's on the field calling a timeout. Yeah. <laughs> He'd been yelling at us about staying in the coach's box. So Dutton and Page will be the receivers to the top. Granger and Jordan Bly, the son of former All-America and Pro Bowler Dre Bly here to the near side. And that's Sonny, the running back, who is with Grant Wilson. No timeouts left for the Hokies, one left for the Monarchs as we wind down this first half. Sonny left side and nothing. And I think Ricky Ronnie's going to take the clock down, call the last time out, and kick a field goal. I think some people may look at this and say, hey, you know, is that not aggressive enough? Virginia Tech plays coverage. One of those wide sacks. Then you had three over two. I was just talking about two over two. You had three over two. Yeah. Running the ball is where your number advantage is. You just lose a battle up front. Xavier Black got beat inside. But I think Ricky Ronnie had already decided I'm playing these middle eight and I'm kicking the field goal and I'm taking the points on fourth down. And knows he gets the ball to start second so this half. This is what I mean. It's two over two, but look at the safety playing inside. So now you feel like you have three over three, or excuse me, three over two, hmm. and the football off and you're fine. So Ethan Sanchez, who hit his last six field goal tries to finish the regular season a year ago, only one of them was 40 yards or longer. This is a relatively short one toward the middle of the field at 28 yards. To draw the Monarchs to within six. And the kick barely squeezes through. Dorian Strong, I think, got a hand up and sent it flipping end over end. It sure looked like that got tipped. Yep. Did Strong get a hand on it? Let's see. Our visits here to Lane Stadium and Worsham Field. Ball in the air, and here we go with half two, and there'll be no return for Lamari and James. And Taylor got a, head, a, a visit with each coach. His message to his team in the second half, trust each other. It's been a hard camp. He's put them through it. They've earned this moment. Now they just have to go out there and finish, guys. Wilson and the Monarchs from their 25, and a keeper gets him five and right at 10 and a first down. Well, the quarterback run game has been given Virginia Tech everything they can handle. There's some of these keeps on the read plays that been get big gainers. Oh, reaching around to pull that one back in is Isaiah Page. Pick up a right at five, and Kevin Decker's offense got a little tempo about it here, Tim. I mean, they have the ability to just get up there and go, and then get up there, get a look at what you're doing defensively to call a play you like a little bit better. That's Obi Sani in the backfield with the Fordham transfer. Little flip to the perimeter, and that might have been slightly underthrown. Isaiah Page, the intended receiver, Jaden Keller, the linebacker, might have been in the throwing lane. Yeah, and I feel like he kind of babied it, was a little unsure. Sometimes as a quarterback, 
when you don't have a clean look at your receiver, you just don't step into it with the same amount of confidence. Josh Fuga, the defensive lineman, down early here, third quarter. Coach Saban, this coach done took over our office. And he's used your Sunday afternoon on ACC Network. Third down, five. Old Dominion at its 40, down six on the opening possession of half two here at Lane Stadium tonight. Wilson flushed to his left. And he'll get the first down and slide down at the 48 yard line. It's pretty good speed by Grant Wilson. There's a few times now we've seen him twice escaping to his right, being able to make a throw, and then just as things break down in the pocket, Burgos. Good escape. Yep, Burgos shoved him out of the pocket. Oh, a little shovel pass. And falling forward is Kadarius Callaway. First time we've seen the transfer from East Mississippi Community College. But he makes the catch and picks up what about eight like to me if you're ever wondering has a guy settled into a game at quarterback it's when he starts doing that playing <laughs> backyard football where you're like yep he's comfortable he doesn't he, he's not affected by the crowd noise at this point he's locked in playing ball. Jalen Butler has come in another junior college transfer sophomore at tight end he's kind of a wing back on the right here for second and short and they're going to hand the ball to Callaway. He'll break the 40 to the Virginia Tech 39 in a first down Keller the tackle on Callaway who last year had 990 all purpose yards at East Mississippi Community College originally signed at Alabama as a defensive back. And the guys up front for Old Dominion doing a good job of creating some space. Creating some room for these. Running backs to kind of find creases and stay on schedule. Wilson looking to offensive coordinator Kevin Decker who's got a trio of fellows over there wearing basically what amounts to a highway DOT vest signaling in place. Here's Callaway fumbled the ball and it is recovered by Nasir Peoples on the bounce. Kadarius Callaway was trying to break into the secondary had it jarred loose and on one bounce it landed with Peoples. One of, the, one of the challenges you have in, in week one, you know, openers is you're thinking about ball security, you're thinking about you know, are you able to tackle, and a lot of times you don't go live, you don't go to the ground, and Callaway just coughs this one up and puts an end to that Old Dominion drive. First turnover of the ball game. Stefan Dubose, the left guard, is shaken up on the play. Another look here at the fumble. Looked like Derek Canteen raked it out. Nasir Peoples recovers. Back in a moment. Knight is still young, though. Plenty of time for that young man to recover. Wells going to flip it out here on the perimeter. This is Tootin trying to cut through a block, and he'll break the 35. It's a gain of five. EJ Green, the linebacker. Making a stop for Old Dominion out of Lafayette High School in Williamsburg. That's Lawrence Taylor's alma mater, by the way. Second down, long five. Here's Wells, a little play fake. And near side, and the catch made. Daquan Felton, transfer from Norfolk State, knocked out of bounds. Right around the 30 yard line of Old Dominion. Rahel and Terry Jones maybe save a Virginia Tech touchdown. Just a one on one route. He runs a curl. Good timing by Wells. And then it's just a missed tackle. And another example of this Virginia Tech wide receiver group playing better than they did a year ago. 34 yards, longest play of the night for the Hokies. Bashal Tootin. Lowers the shoulder and drives toward the 22. That's eight on first down for two. You have to like the decisiveness of two. You know, he really hasn't had any big runs in this game, just kind of chipping away. But I think with his power, it can start to wear on you. And his willingness just to get low and, and churn for yards, I think ends up paying off later. That's Benji Gosnell in motion. There's a throw, and this is Ollie Jennings, who had a touchdown catch in the first half. And he runs right into the coverage of Wayne Matthews, one of his former teammates who shoves him out of bounds. 
it's just Grant Wells spitting the ball out on a run play, design run play, but you get off coverage, don't like the count or look in the box to run the football, just spit it outside, as good as a run, picks up the first down. Tight end, two receivers here to the boundary side. Far side is the other Gosnell, that's Steven, the older brother of the two. And this is Tootin on the carry. He got spun around, still keeps his balance, Tim, as he fights to the seven. E.J. Green was the first of the Old Dominion tacklers to get there. Just feels like, you know, kind of body blow, body blow with him, doesn't it? Just, yeah. it's not blocked perfectly. And I think that's one of the things that Tyler Bowen talked to us about. Things weren't always blocked perfectly last year. Didn't have a ton of production in the run game. Not perfectly blocked now. Seems like Tootin can do it on his own. Second down. Here's Wells to Jennings. Makes a move at the five. Touchdown. Well, the fumble haunts the Monarchs. Grant Wells has thrown his third touchdown pass of the night. Well, it haunts them more ways than one, right? They, obviously the fumble and then Ollie Jennings, former Monarch, with his second touchdown reception. And great drive by Grant Wells. Sixty-nine yards, five plays, point after is good. Whole different ball game now. It's 13 points where it felt like Old Dominion was driving, Tim. Boy, see how much steam the engine's got left for Ricky Ronnie's team, huh? Coughed up by Callaway, recovered by Peoples. Wells was a perfect four for four on the drive. And the last six yards to Holly Jennings. And a swing on the house with Brett Price. Got two touchdown catches tonight. Transfer Jalen Lane the other and now all of a sudden Grant Wilson and the Monarchs have got to get it going there is a throw and catch and I mean a bang bang catch with Kelby Williams the sophomore from Houston against Monsoor Delane pickup of six second and four Wilson up in the pocket and he will stretch from maybe a yard third and about three. Alan Tisdale, starter a year ago, 41st career game tonight. And there's Jalen Jones who is shaken up on the play. Now this is a guy who was moved from wide receiver in the spring and young man from Richmond is he's kind of been the talk of spring and August camp. The way it was described to us was the light came on. Yeah. You know, and just how he was playing and You know what's interesting is you look go to back to that last play. Mm. I think he got a shot at hitting a post down the middle. Go back to these stacks. I think Javon Harvey's running through the middle of the field and Lane. You see him just kind of get stuck in his back pedal, slow back pedal. I mean, he got a home run there, but not able to get the football off because the pressure gets to Grant Wilson. Caleb Woodson playing that star. Another true freshman in the lineup tonight. So now third down and three. Monarchs are seven of 11 tonight. Wilson's got Wicks, who's operating with a career high tonight, rushing 70 yards for him. Wilson escapes, first down. Not, right where, on the money yeah, at I mean, the 35. But, but where he starts that slide, they're going to go fast. So you see the stack looks to either side. Now Wilson, the keeper, and reaches the 39 before he's tackled around the shoulder pads by Mose Phillips. Mose Phillips is from uh, Nashville. His dad was a terrific running back in the Johnny Majors Philip Fuller a uh, Fulmer era at Tennessee. That young man's got quite a future from Cane Ridge High School in Nashville. Second down. 
This is Wicks. Nope, it's Wilson on the keep. Fools everybody into Virginia Tech territory, and whoa, a flyby from Woodson, and there's a flag thrown as Grant Wilson was hit by Caleb Woodson at the 36-yard line. Well, the quarterback run game has continued to be a problem for Virginia Tech. We've seen a few of these out the back door for Grant Wilson. Personal foul, targeting, number 20, defense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. Previous play, then a further review. So Caleb Woodson, a true freshman, cited for the target here, potentially. And I'm not sure. I don't see... Crown, I don't no, see. No, 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 not got. It's not there. He's. It, is he viewing? Is was the official viewing that as a slide? Yeah, but there's no contact with the helmet. I, I know. I, I'm just saying, like, yeah. there's nothing about this that right. was targeted. And they're quick. The it's review, no there is no targeting on the previous play. So there we go. Part of the challenge with this, though, is hear this crowd. You just have a huge play right. by Old Dominion. They have so much momentum. Stadium is quiet. Now, all of a sudden, you have a targeting that's overturned. Now, this place is lit back up. It matters to the flow of the football game. Ball at the 36 is what Caleb Wilson, or Caleb Woodson, rather, bringing the wood to Grant Wilson. A lot of this has happened on the ground, Tim, for a team that averaged just 92 yards rushing last year. Wilson again, maybe a yard, maybe. Somebody's helmet popped off, and that is Grant Wilson's helmet. So guess what? Old Dominion will have to bring a backup in, and that's going to be sophomore redshirt Jack Shields. And here comes the young man from Centerville, Virginia. Awarded a scholarship at the end of spring. But fortunately for Shields, it's not third down. Yeah. But I also don't think they'd be afraid to spit something out on the perimeter. He's got Wicks in the backfield with him. He'll hand to Keyshawn Wicks, and the Hokies rally. Valerius Payne, transfer from Nebraska, bears down on Wicks. And that'll bring, there's Grant Wilson returning. Jack Shields will go back and put that uh, yellow DOT vest back on. <laughs> That's why you got to have the backup not be a signaler. <laughs> There he is. Get Jack in his vest. For possible targeting. Oh my. So. I think this is again Booth initiated targeting. So Gary Patterson for a look. And we'll have to sort this out with you. Oh, fell Darius Payne. So, again, not defenseless. But it's, a, I mean, it's the very top of the helmet. It is top of the helmet, so if you're going by the book here. And, I, and I'll say it again, we're week one, I already feel like I'm frustrated by it. I, I'll say it again, like, it, you know, the Jason Henderson play to me is really not any different than some of the ones we've seen so far. Right. And so, like. We've already had one player from each school disqualified with right, targeting here. But, like, Jason Henderson's play to me was crowning the helmet. Payne, this is crown of the helmet. I mean, plain and simple, it is the very top of his helmet. And I said it before, this rule is in place not to protect Wick so much as it is to protect Payne from himself. I yeah. mean, that's really the, the initial reason for, for using crown of the helmet. 
After further review, personal foul, targeting, number zero, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So number zero for Virginia Tech is disqualified for the remainder of the game. Well, Darius Payne, who's from Suffolk, Virginia, and played 18 games in Lincoln for the Cornhuskers, is DQ'd from his first game as a Hokie. And I, I would just say this, and the targeting, targeting and what we're trying to do is make the game safer. It's the right thing to do. It's great. All for it. But I do feel like it's being officiated differently now than it was a year ago with ball carriers. Mm. And we're just in week one. Yep. Decker throws a new formation here on first down. They're going to sling it to Granger. He thought about a pass. Now going to try and reroute back here to the near side. Amarian Granger at the 15, the 10, the 5, and it'll be first and goal for Old Dominion. It's an outstanding decision by Granger. It was a double pass. They were looking for it. He didn't like it. Instead of just forcing it, makes a good decision. Everyone rallies, including Grant Wilson, to get a block on the play. Wilson helped him out. They got Williams and Granger here to the near side. They have put Butler the tight end in a slot to the left. Wilson looks right, throws, wicks the catch, touchdown, ODU. Keyshawn wicks into the end zone for the Monarchs. It's just a mesh concept where you're going to run the back on a little wide route, a rail route, if you will. That's the first read for Grant Wilson. It's a great call by Kevin Decker. Ball comes out quickly, and that was easy money. Five-yard touchdown pass, second of the night for Wilson. Nine plays, 75 yards for Old Dominion on the scoring drive. And a chance to cut this back to a six-point Virginia Tech lead. Sanchez's point is good. So, Tim, it was a double pass on the original concept here for Granger. Well, Wes, you called it. Say, hey, new formation. The reason it was a new formation, he was trying to get a perimeter block so that Harris Granger, excuse me, could throw the football. He didn't like it, makes a great decision. Grant Williams, excuse me, Wilson, makes a great play on the block on the reverse field, and then just good touch and anticipation to Weeks for the score. And with 58 new players, 41 new scholarship players on this Monarch roster, it's the guy who came, what, the same day that uh, Kevin Decker was named the offensive coordinator at Old Dominion, Grant Wilson went into the portal. Remember, they had Hayden Wolf a year ago who was their quarterback, and he was in a competition in the spring. And Grant Wilson was kind of winning the job and won it to where he was the guy at the start of August camp. And here tonight, Tim, yeah, rattled a little early, but he settled in nicely for them. And I love what Kevin Decker told us about Grant Wilson. He was going to be the starter at Florida. He knew what he was walking away from with no promises at Old Dominion. That tells you about somebody, their desire, you know, their desire to prove what they can do and been really impressed with the fight in Grant Wilson tonight. Been impressed with the job Kevin Decker's done tonight as well. That ball is going to bounce out of bounds before it reaches the pylon off the foot of Sanchez. So the Hokies will come out to the 35. Gives us an opportunity after the touchdown pass to Wicks to give you tonight's edition of Food Lions Food for Thought. Out up Jalen Lane and Ollie Jennings tonight. Two new faces in his receiving room for scores. That's what we talked about off the top, this receiver room being better. At Virginia Tech, they were excited about it. And Ollie Jennings, who was obviously playing for the other side a year ago, has had a pretty good night. And Jennings three catches 26 yards two touchdowns. You see only nine touchdown catches last year for the Hokies. They got a third of that already. And here's Malachi Thomas spinning away from one tackler make it two and then got hit right on the button by Nolan Johnson and Terry Jones. Hey, how about the pursuit to the football and how hard this group is playing on the defensive side for Old Dominion missed tackle right away by EJ Green but then the rally to the football finished off by Terry Jones. Pretty impressive. Second down and nine. 
That's Thomas out of the backfield. Quick throw from Wells with blockers in front. Malachi toward the 40. It'll be third and about five on the EJ Green tackle. The thing you're impressed about when you meet with Ricky Ronnie and his staff is how they get the big picture. They're in the very competitive Sun Belt, Tim, which has become quite a league from an offensive standpoint. And Blake Siler, his defensive coordinator, has been with him. In fact, Ronnie was on the K State staff, I think, when Siler was a defensive lineman. This is his fourth season with him in Norfolk. And of course, Kevin Decker in his first year. And here's a throw. Jennings again behind the coverage, tripped up by Lamari and James, or else Ollie Jennings is in the end zone for a third time. This is a straight one on one matchup. Runs a go route versus press coverage. And Lamari and James, who has a lot of speed, is a good returner, is full time corner now. Just loses the battle with Jennings, and it's a perfect throw by Grant Wells. If it's me, the defender in the ball, what do you tell Taylor? I like me in the ball. <laughs> Good as advertised. And now Thomas taken down by Jason Henderson. First time we've seen 42 in the blue hat make a play behind the line. He just sees that, shoots the gap, and that's a really nice play. Here he is right here. Hmm. I mean, that's pretty good right after a big play. Kind of firing your gun, get in the backfield, make a tackle for loss. Yep, from the Delaware Valley of Pennsylvania. Tackle behind the line. Second down, 13. Well, center of the pocket, rips it middle of the field. And that is Daquan Wright with the catch at the five. It's first and goal. The big sophomore with a grab. It's the same concept as the touchdown pass. Old Dominion is running a mesh concept. Got shallow crosses. They go to that middle route. The umpire's right there. Almost gets his head taken off. As Daquan Wright is there for the pickup. Troy Riley dodging the bullets. First and goal at the five. Hokies threatening again. Thomas knocked down at the two. Second and goal. Lamari and James came crashing in. We got a little off the ball shoving with Taj Rael and Steven Gosnell. There's Malachi from Hartwell, Georgia. This is Wells trying to follow a blocker and does he push to the goal line? No. It'll be third and goal. Maybe a step inside the one. You know, an interesting we saw early on using Chiron drones in this situation, but Grant Wells seems to be the guy they're comfortable with inside the five. And they put right on the right side. Two guys left. Look at Wells trying to sneak under, and there's a flag thrown as Grant Wells went to the goal line. No signal from the official yet. And now there is for the Virginia Tech touchdown if it stands. Gary Patterson. Results of the play are touchdown. Offside, defense, the penalty decline. Touchdown. Two possessions, two, two touchdown drives for Grant Wells here in the second half. Yeah, they're moving the football well, and Grant Wells is seeing it perfectly. It's another nice drive. Oh, my. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> That might be the so easiest flag of the night to throw. Hand behind the ball, hat behind the hand. That's how you stay on sides. <laughs> and so an eight play, 65 yard drive in 334. Wells was perfect throwing the ball again on the drive, Tim. Which means he's been perfect this half, correct? Yep. That's why we haven't seen Kyron Jones come in the game. Yep. Here is John Love to add the point to push it back to a 13 point Hokie lead. And the kick is good. Well, Ollie Jennings is really coming up big against his old school here tonight. Going up huge. This one on one matchup. Good release, and then he's able to stack Lamarian and James at the top, and then that is a perfect throw. Can't hand it to him any better than Grant Wells does there. And Another good read later on the play. 
in the second half, he's been perfect. Seven for seven, 116 yards and two scores. It's a pretty good second half if you grant Wells. And remember, he was one of his first five tonight, right? Yeah, and I think that there was a point with as much as we were seeing Chiron drones that you almost felt like there was a drive early in the first half where it was like, you know, he needs some success here. Otherwise, he might wonder. And with a couple minutes to go here in the third, Taylor, all's good right now for Grant Wells. Yeah, you know, he started a lot of football games, but this is his first start as a married man, you guys. In May, he got married to his high school sweetheart, Josie. He said it was a whirlwind of a day, admitted there were nerves and a little stress. It did rain, which they do say is good luck, but overall a success. I asked him how she is when she's watching a game. He said a nervous wreck. She also knows the signal, so she's a little bit of a QB with Wells out there as well, guys. Aha. Uh -huh. So, oh, very nice. May 13th, the wedding for Josie and Grant Wells. You feel like you play with a little more confidence once you're married? I mean, I was losing my hair, so I was like, I have way more confidence. You know, let's go. <laughs> well, he's had a terrific second half and has has Virginia Tech and building another 13 point advantage. Did Elizabeth quiz you on the the playbook? Oh, always helpful. Yeah. Ball at the 25. And Roche's come back in the ball game. The freshman from Baltimore for Old Dominion. And he'll work to the left side and the ball is out. They scramble at the 37. Knocked away by Johnson. And it does belong to the Hokies. And I think Nasir Peoples is in on that one as well. It's another good run. It's well blocked to get into the open field. Nasir Peoples and then I think you're right. It's the one you don't see from behind. Yep, Will Johnson bangs it out of there. And then once it's loose, who knows, right? Yeah, and well, once it's loose, look at all the maroon jerseys. Yep. Ball at the 37, second turnover of the second half for Ricky Ronnie's team. Here's Wells. Hokies go for the dagger here. Wells overthrows Jalen Lane incomplete. He had kind of turned the corner on Sean Asbury. Oh, and he's going to want that one back. Ollie Jennings is wide open to the post for a score. And for some reason, he comes off of it early. Could have been Jennings' third touchdown of the night. So second down and 10. Vaishal Tootin in the backfield with Grant Wells. Low snap, Wells fields it. Here comes the pressure. Again, does a nice job escaping. Going to fire for the end zone. And Daquan Felton, the intended receiver with Asbury in coverage there. The big 6'5 senior from Norfolk State. Go back to the previous play, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. Here's this post to Jennings, and for whatever reason, he comes off of it, but it's wide open for the score. Third and 10 now for Wells. You see his third down numbers tonight. And you almost wonder if you're in kind of two down territory if you pick up some decent yards here on third down. There's the throw looking in zone for Lane and we're going to get a flag. Yes. Taj Rael was defending Jalen Lane. And a marker out on third down. Pass interference. Defense, number 12. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Another one of those inside fades. And I, I don't think Rael needed this. He's clearly grabbing him. It's, it's P.I. I think this ball was actually overthrown. And was probably going to get away with getting beat. Instead, grabbing him. Extends the drive for the Hokies. Five penalties tonight on Ricky Ronnie's team, but all of them seem to be impactful, don't they? Standing drives. 
Ball pushed ahead to the 22. Rael, the junior from Charlotte. 40 tackles a year ago. Here's Wells to Tootin. And he will pick up about five on first down, down to the 17. Terry Jones will stop for Old Dominion. We have not seen, by the way, back to the drones talk for a moment. We have not seen him in the second half. No, we have not, which was somewhat surprising, but, you know, with the way Wells is playing, I mm. think it makes sense. Tootin's got 45 yards on 15 carries tonight in his Hokie debut. The redshirt freshman Benji Gosnell in motion. And this is Bayshaw Tootin. Boy, and it's a collision, Tim, every <laughs> Wes, time. I was just about to say that. Because yeah. the play before was the exact same thing. Yep. It is a massive collision every time. I and get the tugboat reference, by the way. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, a little bit, what I was talking about, about it just wearing on you. Yep. Third and short. And Tootin fighting for yardage. And I think he's short here. And that would make the Hokies. 8 of 13 on third down, and it is fourth down here. But Tootin waving his arm. Tootin, Tootin wanted to do it again. Yeah, Henderson, the linebacker, was in the mix. They're going to take the quarter. Uh, yeah, they sure it. are. They're going to take the quarter. And we're going to take it with them here at Lane Stadium and Worsham Field. Virginia Tech with a 13 point lead and in striking distance when we come back for quarter four. At about the 12 and a half. Wells trying to dive for it. Oh boy. I'm not sure he got it. And I don't believe he did either, Tim. Gary Patterson will stop this clock after the first play of the final period. And based on the spot, and remember the yellow line is not official. It's good to say that in week one to remind everybody. It's not official, but that guys are really good at that. And yeah. it's pretty much on the money. It is. That doesn't look <laughs> close. And to Ricky and Ronnie's credit, they didn't freak out they, here. They didn't freak out. I don't know what. But it was clearly not a freak out session because basically what happens is you need this stop. Yeah. I mean, it almost feels like it's the game, and it's not. There's a lot of football left, but what a stand. By this old Dominion defense. Nope. It's not close. Didn't get it. Second time tonight that Virginia Tech has cashed out on downs. They did it on their second possession of the first half. You know, it was a late stem, and then you know they faked the ball to Tootin, and it just they don't get a, a push. And Grant Wells tries to kind of dive over the pile because there isn't really anywhere to go. And Ricky Ronnie knew it. Yep. Ricky Ronnie's got nine wins. He's been the head coach four years, but his first year, remember, was the pandemic. They didn't play, so this is technically the start of his third season tonight. His team now trailing 13 points. Keyshawn Wicks, the running back, has not had a rushing yard after 70 in the first half. Wilson in trouble, a fumble. And I think Saunders, the left tackle, fell on it after Powell Ryland raked it out of Grant Wilson's hands. Yeah, you're just going to see the rush coming from down here. It's just going to get to the edge. It's the second time that Santana Saunders has had a problem with Powell Ryland and Old Dominion fortunate to get back on the football. Loss of four. That double deck end zone right behind Wilson got the volume turned up. Steps up, loops it underneath. This is Keyshawn Wicks to the 14 and no more. Gain of five. Third down next for the Monarchs. And with the way that Virginia Tech has rushed the passer, I want to feel like I need to bring pressure. I'm fine playing coverage and letting my front try to get to the quarterback. See three receivers. 
to the top. Dominic Dutton, fastest guy on the team, bottom of the screen here. Dutton trying to come back and offline on the throw. Defended by Monsoor Delane. And Wes, you called it. It was the matchup they wanted, and Dutton just kind of slips coming out of his break. Because of that, he's not able to connect, and pretty quick three and out of this Hokie defense. And Old Dominion can't do anything with the stop on downs. So here is Ethan Dwayne to punt it. Jalen Lane stands at Virginia Tech's 45. Here's Lane off the 37. Straight back up. 45-50, and that is a heck of a play by Granger, I believe. Or no, Asbury making the tackle. Take care of those folks if you can. Midfield after the punt. Grant Wells trying to take Virginia Tech to a season opening win here tonight. First down give is Malachi Thomas. He'll pick up three, maybe four on first down. Great to be with Tim Hasselback, Tyler Tannenbaum. We're in Chapel Hill next Saturday. Carolina and Appalachian State. Boy, they played some doozies. I mean some doozies. Second down and six. It's Thomas checking out to the left flat. Oh, back across the middle. Benji Gosnell, the big tight end. Little brother's got a grab inside the 25 and a Virginia Tech first down. It's a great call by Tyler Bowen. You know, they run the tear motion, get the back out of the backfield, make it seem like they're running another one of those wide screens. See the back's going to vacate out of here. you are going to kind of look at him, make it bluff like you're blocking a perimeter screen, and it just vacates the middle of the field. Pick up to the 23-yard line. First and 10, and Malachi Thomas having a hard time getting any running room. Devin Brand Epps, transfer from Northeast Oklahoma A&M Community College. The tackle from Muskogee. And now on second and nine, Wells kind of with 11.40 to play. Taking his time, play clock down to about 15. And now we'll keep it. Bail to the right side, 15. Oh, took a big lick. That was Sean Asbury, but it's enough for another Virginia Tech first down to the 12. It's a really great adjustment by Grant Wells. He, he's trying to throw this football outside, but Lofton's not looking at him, so he doesn't want to throw it. Then he's got guys downfield because it was an RPO, so he just says, look, I'm going to follow the back's original path. Does a great job picking up the first down. That's a nice play by Grant Wells. Almost four minutes gone here in the fourth, and the Hokies in the red zone again. Here is Thomas. Ooh, what a lick that was. That's Wayne Matthews, the redshirt sophomore. Only 13 tackles a year ago in 10 games. And that is a massive tackle. You know, I feel like these linebackers for Old Dominion are impressive. Yeah. You know, guys that play with a chip on their shoulder and Wayne Matthews, pretty good play. Bashaw Tootin back into the ball game to join Wells here. Shoots it inside. That's Jennings a catch. Taken down at the 10. Matthews again. So a couple of yards there. Third and right about eight or so here for the Hokies. I really think that Grant Wells, like the game has slowed down from a little bit there. The timing of that route really was off. You, you know, he wanted that shallow cross coming into his you know, scope of vision sooner. Just does a good job of, of giving it time, hitting Jennings, and I feel like things have really slowed down for him. Third down and eight for Wells. That is uh, Daquan Wright, the tight end in motion. You see Tootin and Felton also out there to the far side. Here's Wells from the pocket and just overshoots Ollie Jennings. Incomplete. Well, 
Wells is now 17 to 28 for 250 and three touchdowns. He only had three games of 200 yards or more last year. He had a season high 314 against Wofford. But here tonight he's been on point but this is the near miss here to Jennings. It's a near miss. You know he's been fielding these snaps. I want to make a comment on it earlier. I mean the ball has been at his ankles nearly every snap and it's hard to kind of take your eye off the defense field the snap and get it back up 27 yard try for love is good the greatest hokey to play there was a three time NFL champion and two time Super Bowl champion here's the return by Lamar and James out to about the 16 and that would be because Frank Loria and Frank Beamer played in the early years of what was known as Lane Stadium but Carol Dale Whose jersey number 84 out of wise. I feel like this is some artificial intelligence <laughs> purge right here. Is that right? It just happened. Well, <laughs> Keyshawn Wicks is coming to the game. Ball at the 16 for Old Dominion. I'm trying to deliver the good intel. That's all I got. That was pretty good. All right. Throw out on the perimeter. And that's the first catch of the night from Murphy. Just so everyone's clear, by the way, you didn't read any of that. Like, that just, in case anybody was wanting, that, that was straight from the top. Yeah. Well, I mean, Tedder put a lot on me there. I mean, you know, historian? Not just old, really. <laughs> Ball at the 21. Here's Wilson now. This is a 16 point Virginia Tech lead, and Wilson escapes again. 30, 35. He's got another Monarch first down to the 36 yard line. Mario Kendricks flushed him out of there. And Grant Wilson's been an excellent decision maker on scrambles tonight. He's done a good job escaping to his right, knowing when to take off and knowing when to get down. And now he's going to throw, and it's intercepted on the backside. Dorian Strong with the pick 35 30 strong at the 20 15 and banged out of bounds by Wilson third turnover of the second half by Old Dominion two fumbles and now an interception Virginia Tech only created nine turnovers a year ago and they got three tonight I think it's just a miss by Wilson. Kind of has some people in front of him. Ball sails on him. He's trying to float it in there, get it up and down, and it just takes off on him. And Dorian Strong, who was the defender who gave up the game-winning touchdown a year ago, comes up with a big turnover. Dorian Strong's third career interception. Making his 20th career start tonight. He only had four starts a year ago for these Hokies. And now Virginia Tech on the doorstep at the nine. And straight ahead, Basal Tooth. Wow. Plus three tonight, minus six last year. The Hokies were 12th in the ACC, 113th national. And you know, coming into week one, you never know. You talk to a coach. Hey, how are, you, how are you at protecting the football? Your offense. Yeah. Well, does that mean your defense is bad at taking it away? Like, which is it? And you know, you don't really know until the lights really come on. But it's been a pretty good start for the Hokies. Feel like Tootin Navy needs to get a touchdown. Jennings has got a couple. Lane's got one. Right. Play clock winding down, and there's a penalty. Delay a game. Ricky Ronnie. Arms Delay outstretched at the Old Dominion Five bench. Five-yard penalty. He's like, still second down. Certainly, this is going to be flagged, right? <laughs> like, how, how long are you going to leave? Yeah, he's <laughs> how long are you going to leave that at zero before you flag it? I, you know what? I think Grant Wells was equally as frustrated that hmm. the signal didn't come into him quicker. Yep. There you see the. Marriott of signals at the Virginia Tech bench. Is We've it possible them. that like two of those guys aren't even affiliated with the football program? <laughs> Just down there doing whatever. Here's, here's a handoff to Tootin. And again, Bashaw Tootin not taken down by the first guy. That's the thing you notice tonight. 
the physicality he runs with Tim and the fact that normally the first guy doesn't get it. I think that's the key. That's how he changes the run game from a year ago. Not blocked perfectly, running through contact, falling forward, and then also just kind of wearing on the defense. Three to the left here. Single receivers Jennings here at the bottom of your screen. Two touchdown catches already tonight. Low throw will oh, Wells in trouble. He escapes at the five and oh my goodness dives at the two. And they're marking it at the three another low snap here Tim another one and it's just look at it. every single one. It feels like the last two drives have been you know, he's been fielding grounders and it's hard to do that. And then get your head up and you know eyes up and see the defense. There's Caden Moore. Remember now he has uh, moved over from one of those guard spots to take the pivot, right? And I think it's one of those things when when you're tired at the end of the game, are you still consistent with where you're snapping the football? Another try here for Love, and a 22-yard kick is good. Drake May, but how about what we saw from this defense? They get the 31 to 17 win, and y'all, they had nine sacks. That is the most for a North Carolina team in a single game in 25 years. And there'll be no return by Lamarian James. Don't forget Kelsey, Eddie Royal, EJ Manuel, Eric McLean, Coach Rick, all standing by ACC huddle post game tonight from Lane Stadium at Worsham Field on a beautiful night in Blacksburg. Brent Pry scheduled to, well, he was there this morning when they started. Why not? Close the shop tonight with him, coach. That's all coming up when we're done here tonight. I suspect he's going to be fairly pleased, Tim. I think he'll be happy. <laughs> Things got five and a half minutes left, but. Trending in the right direction. Keyshawn Wicks in the backfield with Grant Wilson. 12 of 23, 81 yards, two touchdown passes, and an interception tonight. But he's got 80 yards on 15 carries. And he's going to run it for a 16th time here and pick up about six. Norrell Pollard to stop. A little move on Norrell Pollard, too. Yeah. The big man in space. That's why a lot of times you read the defensive tackle, he's the unblocked defender. Quarterback has the ability to make a mess. Here's Wilson again and to his right and pulled down that time Mario Kendricks. 44th career game tonight for Kendricks from Kissimmee Florida just 19 tackles last season. But he's got 11 and a half behind the line in his career five and a half sacks. Chris Mars groups jumped into that wide three man front here with this 19 point lead. You see Powell Ryland coming in off the edge. They're going to hand the ball to Wicks and he will not make it on third down. And Will Johnson has uh, made a couple plays and knocked the ball loose tonight here in the second half. Fourth down and short. Wilson looking to throw here. Sure is. And into traffic and almost intercepted by Nasir Peoples. And Old Dominion's going to give it away on downs. Tim on fourth and short, they were having some success on the ground and went to the air. Yeah, they were. You called it on the on the wide alignment on third down. I think that's why Old Dominion ran the football on fourth down. They did not get that same look. I actually thought Grant Wilson had an opportunity to run for the first down instead. Tried to force it. Big stop for that Hokie defense. Thank you. Chance to close the show here after the Hokie defense stopped ODU on downs and it'll slide out of bounds maybe after a yard or two. Jason Henderson edged him out. So the fifth year senior, Charleston, West Virginia, is our Honeyback Tam playmaker of the game. And you know it didn't start off perfectly for him. I think that's probably the most impressive thing to me with how tonight is gone. Mm. Starts one for five and well, also knows the new rule that he can run out of bounds and the clock will still start to yep. keep keep running. Yep till the final two minutes. All right. Malachi Thomas in the backfield with Wells. 
And looking to throw. Downfield, Felton. And a collision at the goal line with Asbury. Incomplete. It'll be third and nine. Daquan I, Felton, the intended guy. We'll say this. 36 17. Yeah. You've been pounding the ball. You've been, you know, you're running the football, not for big games, but you've been staying on schedule doing that. The coaches know each other mm -hmm. and our friends like each other. Yeah. I'm surprised that we see two passes to start the drive. Good point. You see Stu Holt, the special teams coordinator with the Hokies, talking with Brent Pry. This is third and nine. I'm sure it has to do with punter kick ratios. Remember John Love tried a 50 yarder a year ago at Duke. And Thomas has spun around, no gain on the play. EJ Green to stop. Old Dominion, by the way. Sunbelt had a big non conference win tonight. Texas State beat Baylor in Waco. They're going to start Sunbelt play against Louisiana next week in Norfolk. And then you know who visits the week after that? Wake Forest is coming to play the Monarchs at Ballard Stadium. And don't forget, we got a full week for you next week on ACC Network. Starts Thursday night with Murray State and Louisville at 7.30 Eastern, and then a quadruple header on Saturday. Courtney Lyle and Hudson Mason going to have a little brunch for you in Winston-Salem. Vanderbilt, Wake Forest at 11 a.m. Charleston Southern at number nine, Clemson. Tigers, of course, play Monday night at Duke, and then Tim and I'll be in Chapel Hill for Appalachian and North Carolina, who beat South Carolina tonight. Charlotte. That's a big one. And then in prime time, Florida State. After tomorrow night's opener against LSU in Orlando, gets Southern Miss. So four, count them four for you next Saturday. Well, high expectations for Florida State this year. You know, yeah. I feel like maybe some people questioning Jordan Travis a year ago when they got to see him, and I feel like just about everybody's all in on him. And here is the punter Peter Moore out now. And Isaiah Page stands at the 10 for the Monarchs. Snap a little high. Moore, good job to flag that down. And Page did a good job selling it, and it bounces into the end zone. Tim, with Jordan Travis and Jaden Daniels tomorrow night in Orlando at Camping World Stadium, you're talking about a guy who can put himself on a pretty significant national stage with a, new, a good night at the office. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, part of it is when do you have the big game? You know, do you have the big game when you're not up against another big game that's going on at that time and people see it and then they see it against an opponent that, you know, is viewed as a tough, athletic, good opponent. And I've been really impressed with Jordan Travis just in terms of decision making. I, I think that's really been the thing that stuck out the most to me. Wilson in trouble again. He'll be sacked this time. C.J. McCray out of Mallard Creek High School outside of Charlotte. He is the nephew of the former Virginia Tech baseball star Franklin Stubbs, who played in the bigs for several years in the 80s. Here's Wilson. He's turned around again and dropped that time. Panay, the redshirt junior from France. Fifth sack of the night for the Hokies. And, and you can just see how you know the depth and the ability on this defensive line for Virginia Tech just starting to wear down the old Dominion offensive line. Wilson. Oh, a little shovel pass with the offhand. And that is Sonny who will scamper out to about the 27 28 yard line. Can we re rack that for Hasselbeck's I mean, analysis here? I'm not even sure I would have been coordinated enough to do this just as you're throwing. I feel like I've done a trick like that like pitching wiffle ball to my kids or something you know with like the old the old wind up where you throw it underhand before you act like you throw it overhand but you're impressed aren't you pretty fancy little <laughs> ball handling there. Tucker Holloway is going to go into the single safety position on the punt return. Ethan Dwayne with 90 seconds left. Pretty good punt to the 25. Here's Holloway. 
Look out now. Far side, Holloway. Midfield. Got one guy to beat. Holloway, 20, 15, 10, and tackled at the 7. Harris saves the touchdown for Old Dominion. You know, Wes, on a night where, you know, we talked about having being some unknowns, and we know that Brent Pry is back here to get back to some of the ways that it was when it was Beamer ball, yep. right? And it was good special teams, and it was playing tough defense, and it was trying to run the football. And sure enough, I feel like we've seen a lot of those elements tonight. Hey. All the way kind of a cherry on top. Well, a year ago, he averaged 90, uh, he had averaged 21 yards of return. He had a 90 yard touchdown against Georgia Tech. He ran that back 66. Just kind of a reminder to special teams coordinator Stu Holt, I'm still here, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bryce Duke in the ball game. He'll get to carry from Wells. And Duke leans forward. For a couple sophomore from Leesburg played in 11 games last year less than 60 yards on 18 carries for Bryce Duke. There's Holloway. You betcha Tucker only five games a year ago. For these Hokies. Who by the way Tim have Purdue here next Saturday who lost it today at home to Fresno State Jeff Tedford's mm. Bulldogs. Went to West Lafayette, picked up a win, and then they'll go on the road for the first time after that to Rutgers. But tonight, tell you what, pretty complete second 30 minutes of play tonight by the Hokies. I mean, very complete. Really, all three phases as well. Played well offensively. Defense got after it, and well, special teams making plays as well. Yeah. Pretty good to experience tonight for Grant Wilson and Old Dominion. Ricky Ronnie and Old Dominion off to start Sunbelt play next week against Louisiana and Norfolk and then Wake Forest mentioned will be in after that. And meanwhile Virginia Tech with Purdue here next Saturday and then off to Rutgers before things begin in ACC play.